Okay, so now we're going to put a couple things together. We are going to talk about how we deal with measurement results and how we deal with them in terms of we're going to do some math with them, right? And what are we going to do when we, when we do math with them? Well, when, and, and the most important aspect of this is, is conversions, frankly. And we're going to use dimensional analysis to do this. Now, dimensional analysis is based on the following premise. The units of quantities must be subjected to the same mathematical operations as the associated numbers. In other words, the units and the numbers, we've got to do the same thing to them. Okay? So, here's, uh, here's one conversion factor, a very common conversion factor we're going to be using a lot. If we're going to convert uh, lengths between centimeters and inches, then we're going to use a conversion factor that looks like this or a conversion factor that looks like this. Right? Here's an example then of how we're going to do it. Suppose we want to go from inches to centimeters. Well, if we're going to do that, here's my inches, and I want to, in the end, have centimeters. The fundamental principle is we've got to make it, we've got to use whatever conversion factor is such that the inches cross off, right? So inches cross off and we're left with centimeters. That is the fundamental principle of conversion factors and dimensional analysis. Here are some other conversion factors. One meter is equal to this many yards. One inch is equal to that many centimeters. Exactly, right? Look at this. In this whole chart, this is the only one that says exact. Okay? Uh, one mile is equal to 1609 meters. One liter is equal to that many quarts, and so on, right? So these are always things we can look up. These are not necessarily going to be something that you'll be expected to, to memorize, right? Common conversion factors. Now let's consider uh, the final concept of this section. We're going to convert temperature units, and these are weird, okay? So Celsius, for example, water boils at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees I'm sorry, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100. Fahrenheit, it freezes at 32 and boils at 212. The 108, the 100 degree difference in Celsius is the same, same difference as 180 degrees in Fahrenheit, right? We could derive, we could just set up like a card, we could just set up a, a um, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system here and and say zero, if this is Celsius and this is Fahrenheit, zero Celsius, right, one, two, zero Celsius is going to be 32, right? We could do ordered pairs here and figure out how to do that, but we're, we're simply going to end up just memorizing a conversion between those. Before we do, let's talk about Kelvins. So Kelvins are the same as Celsius except they're off set by 273 degrees. Right, water freezes at 273 kelvins and boils at 373 uh, kelvins, right? So here are the, the formulas that we're going to use. We could derive these on our own, but we're not going to. If you like, you can just memorize these, uh, and you're always going to get the right answer, right? So if you take a temperature in Celsius, and you multiply it by 9 fifths, and then add 32 to it, you get the temperature in Fahrenheit. And then Celsius uh, plus 273 is going to give you Kelvins. All right? We'll practice this over and over and over again. So there's the introduction to it, but we haven't, haven't given you any demonstrations of that. And then one final picture to help you appreciate that. If these thermometers all have the same temperature, if this is in Kelvins, it's going to say 373 where the Celsius is going to say 100 and the Fahrenheit is going to say 212. And this is the boiling point of water, right? If we're talking about the freezing point of water, that's going to be 0 degrees Celsius. That's going to be 273 and 32, right? This is 100 degrees in Celsius. This is 100 Kelvins, but it's 180 Fahrenheit, right? And again, that'll make more sense as we practice more problems. My feeling is it's not something that you really want to spend and spend a lot of time thinking about. We're just going to calculate some um, conversions and, and and become experts at it. So that's it for chapter one. I hope that's a not too fast, not too slow introduction to to uh, chapter one or to to chemistry. And we're certainly going to be using this stuff the rest of our chemistry relationship.
All right, see you in chapter two.